All right, so remember from 9.1, we said if a geometric series converges, then we can find the sum, right? If I have a geometric ser series converges, we can find of uh, a times r to the n. We can find the sum of that series by taking the first term divided by 1 minus that common ratio, the number you're, you're multiplying by each, uh, each time. So what we're going to talk about today is what's called the geometric power series. So a series with variable terms like 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 x to the n is called a power series. It says note that this geometric power, this is a geometric power series. Right? And the reason why it's geometric is I'm timesing by x each time, right? So in that case, r would be equal to x. That's what we're multiplying by each time. Uh, if it converges, there must what must be true about the value of x? Well, if you remember, we said, right, that for the series to converge, the common ratio, the number we're multiplying by, has to be, um, be it has to be the absolute value of r has to be less than one. So in this case, x is r. So what do we have to be true of x? Well, we know that the absolute value of x has to be less than 1. Or, you know, you can write that this way. That means that the absolute value of x has to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so for that series to converge, because we're multiplying by x each time, x is our common ratio, x has to be between uh, negative 1 and 1. Okay, so this says for these values, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 x to the n, uh, what's it going to add up to b? Well, we're just going to use our formula up here, right? So remember, a is the first term. In this case, the first term is 1 over 1 minus r. In this case, r is x. Okay, so they would all add up to be just that. So this means for these, va for these x values, the function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x can be written as this. So this simple, this function right here can be written as uh, what we call a geometric power series. Alright, so this says down here says examples, find a power series for each of the following functions. Uh, show that four term show four terms and the general term. Also give the series use a sigma notation and give the interval of convergence. Okay, so we're gonna go through and do this. Um, so let's see here we're going to we're gonna think of this like this. I, I want to think of it as this formula right up here, this a over one minus r. So I'm gonna think of that as being 1 over 1 minus negative x. So in this case, a is equal to 1, and um, r is equal to negative x. Okay, it wants me to write it out showing four terms. Uh, so we're going to go like this. f of x is equal to my first term, uh, which would just be... So that first term would just be 1. My second term would be negative x. So I, this is my first term. I'm timesing by negative x each term. So that'd be negative x. Second term would be times that by a negative x would be a positive x squared. So my third term, excuse me. Okay, and then times by another negative x. Right, and that's just going to keep going, dot, 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 dot. Okay, and then it says uh, show for terms and the general term. Uh, we're going to write this using sigma notation, so sigma notation. So I've got n equals 0 to infinity. Okay, of, we just got to take what a is. a is 1, 1 times r to the nth power. r is a negative x. And we should be done there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's do this next one. 
So g of x equals 3 times 1 minus 2x. So again, I'm focused on, on this a minus 1 over r. So I could write this as being, so the 3 is my a, and then I've got 1 minus, and the 2x, and the 2x right there is my r. So if you want to put that down, a equals 3, r equals 2x. Okay, let's take those and we'll write out the write it out as a the first four terms of this sequence, this power sequence. So it's going to equal. Okay, start with a. So a is three. That's my first term. To get to the next term, I have to times by two x. To the next term, times by two x again, and so on. So two x, sorry. So it'd be twelve x squared times by two x again. 24x cubed, and of course we could keep going. And that's going to come out to equal, right? All of that's going to come out to equal the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of 3 times 2x to the nth power, right? 3 is my first term, and I'm timesing by 2x is my r, just when I'm multiplying by each time. So it's this example three and three right here. So again, we do this. And this one's a little tricky to come up right. I want again. I want to think of it as being that a over. Hold on just a second. There we go. I want to think of it as being that a over one minus r, right? So I'm going to go write this as being one over one minus. 1 minus 3x. So that's a little bit tricky, but if you look at it, if I carry that minus through, I get a minus 1 plus 3x, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so I just end up with a plus 3x. Anyway, so a little bit tricky, but in this case, that tells us that a, put it over here, a is equal to 1. So a is equal to 1, and then r is equal to that 1 minus 3x. Okay, let's write out the, the first four terms. So I have h of x equals, the first term is just 1, plus, and then I got to go the previous term times that 1 minus 3x. So this should just be 1 minus 3x, plus times by another 1 minus 3x, so 1 minus 3x squared plus, and you could just keep going, right? Next one would be 1 minus 3x cubed headed that direction. Okay, I'll start it as, a, as the, using the sigma notation. So I'm going to have uh, n equals 0 to infinity of a, which is 1, times r, which is 1 minus 3x to the nth power. Okay, that, that's what that's what that sum up there is going to come out to be, right? When we add a bell up. Well, one thing I forgot is I did not do uh, the interval of convergence on these. Again, what the interval of convergence means is it's only going to be a converging function if r is less, if the absolute value of r is less than one. So on this one, for example, r is one minus three x. So I'm going to take the absolute value of 1 minus 3x. To be a converging series, the absolute value of 1 minus 3x has to be less than 1. Well, that's the same thing as saying the, the um, 1 minus 3x has to be between... Oops, I didn't mean to put that equal sign on there. Sorry about that. It has to be less than 1. So that means... Um, oh, let me just erase that whole thing and start over there. So that in order to find out what x is, that means... The 1 minus 3x has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, I just need to solve that. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to minus 1 from all three sides. Um, I get negative 2 is less than negative 3x, which is less than 0. I just minus 1 from all three parts. Divide by negative 3, so I get 2 thirds. I have to flip the signs. Okay. So I get done there. This is my this is what we call our interval of convergence. Right? Interval of convergence. That's that's what we just found right there. Okay. So x has to be between zero and two thirds.
Uh, let's go back up to one and two. Let's find the interval convergence on those. Okay, so on this first one, uh, R is a negative X. So I know that the absolute value of negative X has to be less than one. Well, the absolute value of negative X is the same thing as the absolute value of X. It has to be less than one. And that means X has to be between positive one and negative one. Okay, that is my IOC right, for this problem up here. Uh, number two, again, I missed that one. In that case, uh, R is 2X. Okay, so we know the absolute, for my IOC, I know the absolute value of 2X has to be less than one which means 2x has to be between 1 and negative 1. Divide everything by 2, and we know that x has to be between a negative 1 half and a positive 1 half. So again, that's telling you the range of it, what, you know, the range, you know, what, what x could possibly be so that that series would still converge. So if x were anything bigger than a half or smaller than a negative 1 half, that would not be a converging series. Okay. So again, that interval convergence that we're talking about up here is saying for what x values, what could x be so that the series still converges? And all you're going to do is take r, your common ratio. We know our common ratio r has to be, what the absolute value has to be less than 1, right? So I took my common ratio, which was 2x, it ha the absolute value had to be less than 1. In this case, the common ratio is 1 minus 3x. Right, and it had to be the absolute value of that had to be less than one. So, and that's how you find the interval of convergence. All right, this next part says um, power power series by um, substitution. So this isn't too tough. All we're going to do it says use the power series from example one, make a new power series for f of x squared. So number one, if you look up above, you guys have it in your notes there. I'm not going to slide my screen up. But number one was f of x equals 1 over x plus 1. And it came out to be 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, right? So on and so forth. Okay, and it wants me to find what is f of x squared. Well, all I'm going to do is write this. I should have maybe should have written this top part this way instead. I mean, it's the same thing, but really we thought of it as being 1 plus x, right? So when I plug in the x squared, I just end up with this. Well, all that happens then is everywhere there's an x, I just have to replace it with an x squared. This would be x squared squared, so x to the fourth. This would be x squared cubed, so x to the sixth, and so on. Uh, look at five. It says use a power series in example two. Make a new series for g of square root of x. Well, let's go back up and look at what g of x was. So g of x up above was three plus. Oops, pen's not right. There we go. Three plus six uh, x plus twelve x squared plus twenty four x cubed, and so on. Okay. So now we're just going to plug in the square root of x. All that's going to happen, g of square root of x is equal to 3 plus 6 square root of x plus, this is a little bit tricky, but it'd be 12 square root of x squared. Well, that's just 12x plus 24, and I got the square root of x cubed. So square root of x cubed is just x to the 3 halves. And you could keep going from there. Okay, so that's just uh, using substitution there to make a new power series. All right, now let's get to the calculus stuff, right? We want to do uh, power, it says take a power series by differentiation. It says use the power series of f of x equals 1, minus, 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Write a power rule for f prime of x. Okay, well, we've got, right, so we already know that f of x equals 1 plus x plus x squared 
plus x cubed dot dot dot. Okay. Find the derivative. Well, because they're these parts are just added together, we can just do it as separate parts. So the derivative of one is zero. Derivative of x is one. Derivative of two x is or x squared is two x. Derivative of x cubed is three x squared, and and so on. Okay, look at number seven right here. It says if j of x equals one plus x squared over two factorial, x cubed over three factorial, x to the fourth over four factorial, it wants us to find j prime of x. All right, so again, just do it one piece at a time. j prime of x is equal to derivative of one is zero, derivative of x is one. Okay, when I get to this one right here, think of that as being one over two factorial times x squared. Well, the one over two factorial is just a constant, right? So it's going to end up being, the two just drops down, so it's going to be two over two factorial x. So just using the power rule right there. Plus, the next one, the three drops down, that would be three x squared, and the three factorial is just a constant. It's a scalar multiple, excuse me, so it just stays there. Plus the four drops down. Okay. And so on and so forth. And we could simplify that a little bit if you wanted to. Right? The zero doesn't really matter. It's going to be one plus, and the two and the uh, two factorial are just going to cancel out. So that would just be x. That makes sense. Two factorials, two times one is two. Those just reduce. K okay, plus. And on the next one, the three, if you have three over three factorial, right, on this one right here, that's uh, three times two times one on the bottom, right? The threes just cancel out. So what it ends up being, that first one is just x, but the next one, let me just fix that, sorry. But the next one, right, this one right here, when I simplify that, that would just be um, x cubed over th over x squared. Man, my pen's having problems here. I'm sorry. So that would just be x squared over 2 factorial because the 3 over 3 factorial just simplifies when you do it. Okay, oops. Battery's running low here. Give me just a second. All right, we got that battery problem fixed. Thanks for being patient there. So, okay. So anyway, this you can simplify that down just to be, just to be this problem right there. Okay. Now, something I want you to notice. This is kind of cool. This is what j of x is equal to, right? And this is what its derivative is equal to. And I could go out another place if you wanted to, right? If we go out to that, this one right here, the 4s would reduce. So I'd end up with x cubed over 3 factorial. Well, what I want you to notice is this, is the derivative of this function is the same thing. I get the exact same function back again. Okay, so the function and its derivative are equal to each other. So the question in the book here says, can you identify the function j of x? Well, what function equals itself? Well, j of x, right, uh, would have to be e to the x, right? We know the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. It's the only function where its derivative equals itself. So kind of cool here, um, this is a power series that gives you e to the x. Okay, this is the same thing. All right, let's do one other problem here. We got, this is our last one. We're just doing integration now. Okay, we'll come in a problem from that. So it says... Uh, power series by integration. So since 1 over t equals that, or we did that one up above, we did 1 over 1 plus x, but it's the same thing, just 1 over 1 plus t. It wants us to integrate both sides and see what happens. Okay. So let's integrate both sides. So let's start with this side. If I integrate that, uh, one, one, plus, 1 over 1 plus t integrates to be the ln of the absolute value of 1 plus t. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to x. Okay, then over here on this other side, 
we just need to integrate uh, each part. Right? It's a plus or minuses in between, so I can do it one piece at a time. Uh, so the integral of 1 would just be t minus the integral of t would be t squared over 2. Next one would be t cubed over 3. The next one would be t to the 4th over 4. Right, and that's just going to keep going. We're going to evaluate that again from 0 to x. Okay, so if I plug in x, I end up getting the ln of 1 plus, the absolute value of 1 plus x minus, plug in 0, that'd be the ln of 1, is equal to, if I plug x in here, I get x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4, and so on. If I plug in 0, nothing happens, right? If I plug in 0, everything comes out to be 0 across, right? So you got like that minus 0 out there, what all that's going to come out to be. Um, let's see, look down here. It says, use the result from example 8 to write a power series for f of x equals the ln of x. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. We've got what this is equal to up here, right? We've got all of this. We're going to use this as a guide. Well, sorry about that. I meant to highlight. We're going to use this as a guide up here okay, and see if we can come up with what that would be equal to. Well, the ln of x is the same thing as the ln of 1 plus, oops, 1 plus x minus 1. So if you look up above, what we're doing is comparing this. Hey, by the way, just as a side note, I should mention this. Remember that x, to be a converging series, x has to be between negative 1 and 1. So this, if x is between negative 1 and 1 right there, that means that I don't really need the absolute values. Does that make sense? So if x is between negative 1 and 1, then when I plug it in here and go 1 plus x, it's always going to be a positive number, always. So really this is equal to this right here. Okay. So if I come down here, all I'm doing really is substitution. So I'm going to use a different color. Uh, something right here. I'm just putting the x minus one in for the um, for the x right here. Right, I have one plus x minus one in place of the one plus x. Okay, to evaluate this. Okay, so I go back up to that problem up above. All I have to do is everywhere there's an x, I just have to replace it with an x minus one. So I've got uh, x minus one minus x minus one squared over two plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 plus, or, oh shoot, I should have been, oh, let's see. This one is a minus, this one's a plus, then we got a minus x minus 1 to the 4th over 4, and so on. Okay, so that's what the, that's how we can write the ln of x, right? This is the ln of x equals this, which equals that, that uh, power series right there. Okay, let's go down to this next problem, number 10. This is the last example here. It says, now write a series for g of x equals x squared times the ln of x. Okay, so remember, if x is between negative 1 and 1, that's really just a constant out there. So all that's going to happen is this. Um, if I have, if I want to write a power series for x squared ln of x, all I'm going to do is times it all by x squared. So x squared times the, ln, times the ln of x, which we know is x minus 1 for the first term, minus x squared times x minus 1 squared over 2, plus x squared times x minus 1 cubed over 3, minus x squared times x minus 1 to the 4th over 4, and, oops, dot, dot, dot so on and so forth until 
I, you know, as far out as I want to go. Okay, so again, these are the, this whole section. It's really not a ton of calculus, although you will do a little bit of integration and differentiation. But for the most part, you're looking at just power series, okay, and how we can write power series, or how we can write a function as a power series. Okay. All right, best of luck. Let me know if you got questions.